you look at any given bird and it's like a whole ecosystem in itself. And I guess that's one of the things that really excites me about this stuff. I can understand you know, evolutionary history in this little microcosm. My name is Jason Wexstein. I'm a staff scientist here in the bird division at the Field Museum of Natural History. And I'm an evolutionary biologist that studies the evolutionary biology of birds and the evolutionary biology of parasites, in particular chewing lice that live on birds. It was during my PhD that I had decided to work on, on toucans because there were some interesting evolutionary questions to ask about plumage coloration patterns. And I was actually preparing a museum specimen and found a louse on it and I thought, hmm, I'm gonna keep that thing in a vial. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll do something with coevolutionary biology too. That would be kind of cool. And you might think that chewing lice, you know, why would anyone want to study chewing lice, right? But if you look at them under a microscope, they're really complex organisms. There's a lot of variation in what we call the life history of the parasites. How the parasites disperse, how they live, what they feed on, all the things that make up the life cycle of that organism. I think there's been a shift from, you know, the main focus in coevolutionary biology early on was cospeciation. In other words, what we can do is we can compare a host phylogeny and a parasite phylogeny, and we can basically ask the question, is the parasite phylogeny a mirror image of the host phylogeny? It's much more difficult to get at the other kinds of things that affect coevolutionary history. Why do parasites switch hosts? In what ecological context do they switch hosts? All good biology involves good natural history sort of knowing something about the organisms of interest and then asking questions about that natural history using the tools that we have.